ministry. So we thank God, we bless God, and we praise him for his goodness and his mercy. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. It is so good to wake up to a new day and know that despite the troubles in the world, God is still on the throne. While we were sleeping last night, he did not abdicate. He did not leave the throne. He did not leave us alone. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And so we invite you to gather together. Come with us into the presence of the Lord. Let's worship him today. Let's give him some praise, glory, and honor. And then let's let's uh, pray and, and hear the word of God. The message today, I believe, is going to bless your heart. The message is going to set you free. I believe that the message today is going to take a lot of worry out of a lot of people. And so we invite you to worship with us. Worship. Give God your total attention. Uh, give him all of your heart. Seek him with your whole heart. The Bible promises that if we seek him, we shall find him. And we shall find him when we seek him with our whole heart. In other words, don't hold back on God. Don't hold back on him. Because when Jesus hung on the cross, he did not hold back on us. He gave his all and all for us. And we thank God. We bless God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. So we thank you. And thank you for tuning in. We pray that you're receiving this message loud and strong and clear. And we want you to share with the whole world starting with your family, that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the answer. He's the King of Kings. He's everything we need. And so we put our trust in him. We call upon him. The songwriter said, I will call upon the Lord for he's worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. My name is Leroy Carter. I live in Lithonia, Georgia, and um, we hold our services here at our studio in Lithonia, Georgia, where Back to Basics Ministries is reaching the whole world. Why are we trying to reach the world? Because the Lord said so. God said he loves all people. He does not want people to perish. And ladies and gentlemen, these are the last days. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the last days. It does not take a rocket scientist to realize that these are the last days. And in these last days, God is gathering his harvest. He's ready to bring us home to be with him, to spend eternity in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, you may not be saved right now, but we want you to be saved. And, and salvation is all about giving your life to Jesus and receiving him as your Savior and Lord. You see, God made you for a purpose, and the purpose is to worship him. And many people have been confused and deceived, thinking that their job and their purpose on earth is to make money, be a superstar, uh, build a big house have a lot of cars, a lot of money, but God, God, God wants you to prosper, but God made you fearfully and wonderfully. In every nation, every person, he has made that person fearfully and wonderfully. In other words, God is no respecter of persons. He loves all people. He loves people in America. He loves people in Europe. He loves people in South America. He loves people in Asia. He loves people in Africa. And he does not love anyone better than anyone else. And he made us in his image. Yes, we look differently. We have different colors, different textures, different hair. Uh, we live in different regions. We talk different languages. 
but God loves us all equally. And the Bible says he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the problem is Satan corrupted God's creation. Satan went into the Garden of Eden, corrupted Adam and Eve, and caused perfect creatures to sin. And, and God had to make God had to make a good um, God had to make recompense for that, the make a way. So we're just checking, looking some, looking at some te technical difficulties to see if you're coming in, uh, if we're coming into you. So uh, just bear with us for a moment. Bear that thought. Okay, Satan corrupted God's creation, and God had to make a way to get mankind free from sin. When the devil corrupted uh, Adam, Adam caused mankind to have a sinful nature. And every one of us who was born was born in sin. Sin is in our nature. And God will not allow any sin in heaven. He just won't allow it. He just won't allow it. And so we praise God that God has made a way. And the way he's made, no matter where you live, if you live, in, live around a nation where they worship Buddhism or Islam or Hinduism, that is not the way. Jesus Christ is the way. There's only one way to be saved. And so we encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Okay, so we thank God, we bless God, and we praise God for what he is doing. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks to you. We praise you, give you the glory and the honor. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you forgive us of all of our sins. We thank you for this new day. We praise you for this new day. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you touch the hearts of the people. Help them to hear your word. Let your word go forth with power and demonstration in the Holy Spirit. Save souls today. We pray that you'll save souls and heal and deliver. Lord, we pray for the many people in the Caribbean whose homes have been destroyed. We pray for nations that have been destroyed by the hurricane. We, we thank you, Father. We bless you, Father, and we praise you. We ask that you'll stretch forth your hand upon the nations of the Caribbean, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and uh, Antigua, and other nations, and bring healing to them, Lord. Bring healing to them. Then, Father, we pray that you'll bless the people in Florida, Mexico, uh, Texas, and help them, Lord, and help the people to turn to you, Lord God, because you are the living God. There is no other God but you. And so we praise you and we thank you, Father. Lord, we know that all around us, we see destruction. We see people's lives being destroyed. We see people disrupted. We see people in lines, long traffic lines, trying to get out of Florida into higher ground. Help them, Lord God. Protect them, Lord. God, we know that we're living in an age where there are uh, disruptions and storms and all kinds of things happening to people. But we pray that people will look at the big picture. God, we know that you're bringing uh, judgment to the earth, judgment to America. But help people to look beyond the disasters and the catastrophes that they see and to call upon the name of Jesus. You said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so we thank you. We praise you and we bless you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We just want to take a little time out right now and ask you to 
give somebody near you a big old hug. Tell them I love you. Uh, if you're with your family, tell you, hey, I love you, family. Uh, if you're with a friend, hey, I love you. And God loves you. And we just ask that you take a little time out now and thank God. Thank God for who he is. Let's lift up holy hands. You may not be accustomed to raising your hands, but let's raise our hands to God. Just lift them up. Just lift them up. Just lift up holy hands to God. That's worship. We worship you, God. We give you a wave offering. We give you a thanksgiving. Lift up your hands to God. God, I surrender to you. I surrender to you, Lord. I surrender my life to you. Lift up your hands and say, God, I humble myself before you. God, forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me of all iniquity. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, I want you to save me. And if you're not saved, ask him right now. Lord, save me. And I thank you for the gift of salvation. Well, bless God. Bless God. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking forward to some great events. In about three weeks, we're going to ordain one of our associates, Linda Barrett. And we ask that you join us live on that the first Sunday in October for the ordination service for one of our associates, uh, a very faithful woman named Linda Barrett. We give a shout out, Lord God, uh, to all of God's people who help bless this ministry, to help this ministry to, to grow. And we thank God for your faithfulness. Now let's take a look at the word of God. Let's turn in our scriptures. We want to start with Isaiah 26 and verse 3. We're highlighting Isaiah 26 verse 3. And we're going to use a subject today. We're going to use this subject. How to keep from going crazy in a crazy world. That's our subject today. How to keep from going crazy in a crazy world. Listen to what Isaiah says. Verse 3 of chapter 26. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. The Bible promises thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts thee. In other words, if you keep your mind on God, God will keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind on God, God will keep you in perfect peace. Verse 4 says, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Praise God. We thank God for that word. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a crazy world. It's messed up. It is messed up. All kinds of things are happening. And if you look at the things going on around you, you'll lose your mind. You'll go crazy. But God gives us a formula that he will keep us in perfect peace. No matter what's going on, if we keep our mind on him. And so I say to all my friends in Florida, hey, Larry Cooper, hey, Nick Desio, to my cousin Bonnie, to all of our friends, even strangers in Florida, keep your mind on the Lord. I give a shout out to all the people in Houston, Texas. Many of you have lost everything. Keep your mind on the Lord. Trust the Lord to restore you. Trust the Lord to restore you. They might take your home from you. The flood might wash your possessions away, but Satan cannot steal your soul. Plant yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him. Trust God. You may have lost everything. You may have lost your job. You may have to relocate, but call on the name of the Lord. We say to those of you who are escaping 
Hurricane Irma in Florida. Put your trust in the Lord. Keep your mind fixed on him. And I believe God will bless you. He said he will keep you in perfect peace as you keep your mind on him. I've got, I got a lot of friends up north who call us. Hey, how are you and Sister Jackie doing? <clears throat> How's everything in Georgia? And we say, hey, we're all right. We're not uh, affected by the storm yet, but we're praying for people who are affected. But we're all right. And so to all of our friends up north, we're doing fine. But keep praying for those who are south of us in southern Georgia and, and uh, Florida and along the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Pray for them. And trust God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God is bringing judgment on America. Now, many people don't believe that. Many people want to blink their eyes on that. But God is bringing judgment on America. Ladies and gentlemen, God must judge America. Why? Because we have sinned against him. America has turned their backs on God. Yes, Praise God, there are still many Americans who love the Lord. There are still many people in Europe, many people in Africa, many people in Asia who love the Lord. God will not forget you, but God has a problem with sin. So many people in so many nations, including this nation, have rejected God. They have rejected him and turned on their backs to him. They don't want to hear what he says. They've kicked him out of their schools, out of their governments, even out of their churches. Many people are hating on Christians, hating on believers. They don't want to hear what the Bible says. Man wants to do his own thing. And so God has to judge sin. When we look at the Bible, when we look at what happened in the Old Testament, we see God judging sin. We see him judging Sodom and Gomorrah. We see him judging nations that turn their backs against him. And God even judged his own people, Israel, the Jews, whom he chose to be his people. And because they turned their backs on him, and refused to worship him and refused to obey, God allowed Israel to be invaded by a foreign government and taken captive into a foreign land. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to pay heed in America. You need to pay heed in your nation. Wherever you're watching this video, you need to pay heed. If you have turned your back to God, please, please, I beg you, confess your sins, repent, and turn unto the Lord before it's too late. Because if God cuts you off, you're through. And you don't want to spend eternity in hell, in a lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, God is just. He's a God of love. He is holy. But also, God is jealous. He said, you shall have no other gods before me. So your money, uh, uh, sex, drugs, uh, material things, your job, your possessions, if you make them gods and turn your back on God Almighty and reject him and reject Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, God, as loving as he is, he must punish sin. And so he's giving us warning after warning after warning after warning. Now, I'm not one of these uh, uh, so-called prophets who, who give uh, a timeline about things that are happening, but I'm sensitive enough that when God sends storms and, and allows tsunamis and earthquakes and fires and hurricanes and typhoons, and God says, repent, and storms are coming, I'm sensitive enough to know that God is serious about judging. And the Lord spoke to me just two weeks ago. And he said, I'm sending a storm to America. It's going to be more devastating than any storm America 
has ever seen. He said, this storm is not going to be a weather storm. It's going to be more devastating than Hurricane Harvey. And you remember Hurricane Harvey a few weeks ago. God said, the storm I'm sending to America, I must send it because Americans have rejected me. They've gotten so proud, so pompous, so puffed up that they don't want to hear from me anymore. And so therefore, I must punish America. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're living in another nation, if you're not worshiping God and obedient to him, God must punish. And so he gives us an open door. The windows of heaven are open. The doors are open. And God is saying, return to me. Repent. Come to me. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. And so those of you who can't sleep at night, those of you who are restless in your spirit, check out your relationship with God. I know many of you watch the news and you're uh, staying in tune with CNN and world news and all you see around you is devastation and destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Make sure you're saved. Make sure that you're saved. If you want to be saved, don't know how to get saved, want to be led to salvation, call me, contact me. Uh, give me a phone call, 404-205-1101. Contact us here at Back to Basics Ministries. Send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. We're not going to ask for your money. We want to lead you to salvation, pray for you, and help you to find a pastor who will preach to you the word of God and teach you the word of God. We want to help you to find a fellowship, a local church where you can worship God in spirit and in truth. Send me a message uh, on Facebook. Send use in, use Messenger and send a message to me so that we can help you. Or send me a tweet at BTB M I N. We're here to help you to get closer to the Lord. We don't want anyone to be lost. We want our families to be saved. We want our friends to be saved. We want strangers to be saved because God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, the price has already been paid for your sins and for mine. No matter what you've ever done, the price has already been paid. Jesus took our sins in his own body. Jesus paid the price for us. And all you have to do is repent of your sins. Confess Jesus as Lord of your life. Let him be your Lord, your Savior, and God, and King, and follow Jesus. Get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church and follow Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so we look at Isaiah, and Isaiah lived in a difficult times. I thank God for the Bible because the Bible describes men and women who lived in difficulties, who observed persecution, suffering, destruction, catastrophes. They survived earthquakes, tsunamis. They, dis they uh, survived destructions. They survived armies that invaded them. Why? Because of their trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, but when you look back on history, Every nation that has defied God no longer is prominent. Many have been wiped off the face of the earth. When you look back at ancient Syria, ancient Phoenicia, ancient Assyria, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, 
when you look back on Babylon, those nations, or some still exist as countries, but they don't have any power because they defied the living God. God erased most of them from the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, God will do the same thing with America and with your nation if you don't repent. Our leaders need to repent. We need to repent. For all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. America, don't think because you're a great nation that you're going to survive without God. It is impossible. The Bible says that nation is blessed whose name, whose God is the Lord. Let me say that again. That nation is blessed whose God is the Lord. And so we need to make Jesus Christ our Lord reject all these other so-called gods, pull down every stronghold, destroy all those idols, destroy all those gods we've made, those man-made gods, and let us return to the Lord God Almighty. As I preached uh, two weeks ago, let us rise up and build. Let us build Jesus in this nation. Let us rise up and build. Let's be like Nehemiah. Let us uh, observe the destruction around us. You see the signs. Uh, we see what's going to happen. So let us prevent God's hand of wrath by repenting and calling on the name of the Lord. Let us rise up and build, not walls around people, but build walls of love and, and surround one another with love. Let's build a, a, a walls of righteousness by making Jesus Christ Lord of our land, Lord of our hearts. Let us walk in holiness. Let us love one another. Let us stop hating one another. Let us get together. Let us get together, ladies and gentlemen, and praise God and worship him in spirit and in, in truth. Let's invite Jesus to return to this nation. You might hear me stumbling over some of my words because I'm hearing an echo in my headset as I talk, but we'll clear that up and we hope that your transmission is clear. Praise God. Isaiah 26, 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord because he trusts in thee. I trust in the Lord. What about you? I trust in the Lord. I'm going to be like Job. Job was sitting on the town dump. He was so sick. He had wounds and pus coming out of the wounds on his body. The dogs were licking his wounds. His wife left him. His children had gotten slaughtered. Uh, his friends had, had, had died. Uh, his his so-called friends that were left uh, were coming to him, accusing him, and, and saying he had committed sin against God. And Job was in a mess. But Job did not stop worshiping God. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And so we thank God. Thank God for Job's message. And that's my, that's my position. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There is no destruction, no evil that can overtake us if we trust in the Lord God. The, the Bible says that no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. No evil shall befall us as we trust in the Lord. Make Jesus your trust. Make Jesus your trust. If you're not saved, get saved today. Make your decision. I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ. Make a declaration that Jesus Christ is Lord and, and stick with him. Whether you're having good times or bad times, stick with the Lord Jesus Christ. Stick with him and don't let anything or any person separate you from the Lord God Almighty. I made my decision years ago, years ago, 
Years ago, I realized I could not control my life. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I was living crazy in a crazy mixed up world, but I found peace in Jesus Christ. I found peace and, and many years have gone by since then. I've seen destruction. I've experienced uh, difficulties, catastrophes, been uh, involved, had sickness in my body, and God has delivered me because I put my trust in him. The Bible says, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and respect not the proud. Ladies and gentlemen, more storms are coming. There's a hurricane called Jose just waiting right after Irma. Jose, Ho, Jose is in line. Then there's Katia. And there are many more. More storms are coming. More storms are coming. But do not be alarmed. Look at the big picture. God is still on the throne. God is permitting these things to happen. He's judging America. And in judgment, he wants Americans to repent. And repentance starts with you and me. We cannot point the finger. Stop pointing your finger at the president. Stop pointing your finger at the Congress. Stop pointing your finger at previous leaders. Point the finger at you. Take a look at yourself. Examine yourself. Is it I, Lord? It is I, Lord. And if you can uh, recognize that you're not saved, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know because if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, if he's not Lord of your life, you're not saved. But you can be saved. God will erase all of your sins. He will remove all your iniquities. He will not hold evil against you. And he will give you a brand new life. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you. He will keep you in perfect peace. You can lay down and sleep at night even though a hurricane is going on around you. So God is calling people to repentance. He's calling the nation to repentance. God wants to rebuke that proud spirit. God said, you should have no other gods before me. He said, I am a jealous God. And so God is judging the nation. America, wake up. Wake up, America. Repent. Repent. Well, you say, well, why is so much devastation happening to other nations? Wake up, nations. Wake up. Wake up and make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. You see, God has to destroy this world system. Romans chapter 8 teaches us that all earth groans. Even earth is feeling the, the results of Adam's sin. When Adam sinned, earth received sin. Earth that God had made in perfection became a sinful place. And now earth is groaning. Uh, tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, storms, hurricanes. This is a sign of the end, ladies and gentlemen. Earth is groaning. Earth is waiting for the new birth. Earth is waiting to be born again. John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Ladies and gentlemen, this earth will be destroyed. A new earth will be created. And, and the Lord will come back uh, and, and he will have Christians to rule over a new earth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is essential. It is essential that you get saved, that you stay saved. And no matter what comes your way, do not deny Jesus. Do not turn your back on Jesus. Isaiah, in his day, saw much destruction. He saw much destruction. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Even in all the destruction that Isaiah saw, and all the prophecies God had given him about destruction because of the sins of the Jewish people. Isaiah said, in the year that my cousin Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. The angels cried, holy. And I said unto myself, whoa, I am a sinner. I'm a man undone. And he said, an angel brought a coal from the altar and placed it on his lips and cleansed him and cleansed him. He was cleansed. And then he went forth and preached the word of God. He went forth in a sinful nation to preach the word of God. And he called people to return to the Lord. And I recall Isaiah writing, it's in the 40th chapter, the 31st verse. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, Isaiah. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. And it was Isaiah who prophesied that a virgin will give birth and, and the, the child born to a virgin will be the Lord God Almighty, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus Christ, who was born and died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. So ladies and gentlemen, even during the times of destruction, God gives us signs of hope. We have hope today. We have hope as an anchor. We have hope as an anchor because Jesus Christ died on the cross and he entered into the Holy of Holies and he entered into heaven and because our souls are anchored in him, no storm can destroy us. No storm, no tsunami can destroy us. Oh, oh, the storms can destroy our body. The storms can destroy our material goods. The storms can wipe away our homes, but nothing can destroy our soul when we've given our heart to Jesus Christ. That's why we have peace, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have to go crazy in a crazy world. We don't have to go crazy in a crazy world. We can be at peace because greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Greater is he in us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of every born again believer. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. You can lay your head down at night and you can go to sleep. You might ha not have a job. You might not have a home. Your body may be wrecked and sick in pain, but trust in the Lord. God is a healer. He is a deliverer. He will provide every need. God said he will in no wise forsake us or leave us. He will never let the righteous be forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, in this crazy mixed up world, you don't have to go crazy. You keep on trusting in the Lord. I say, you don't have to go crazy. You keep on trusting in the Lord. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Thou will keep him and her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. I thank God for that message. I thank God for that message. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're experiencing, you can experience perfect peace in Jesus Christ. You can experience perfect peace in Jesus Christ. The songwriter wrote, and this is Charles Wesley, Jesus, lover of my soul. He said, Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly while the nearer waters roll while the tempest still is high hide me O oh my savior hide till the storm of life is past safe into thy haven guide O oh, receive my soul at last then he said other refuge have i none hangs my helpless 
soul on thee. Leave, ah, leave me not alone. Still support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is stayed. All my help from thee I bring. Cover my defenseless head with the shadow of thy wing. Then he winds up this great hymn with the words, Plenteous grace with thee is found. Grace to cover all my sin. Let the healing streams abound. Make and keep me pure within. Thou of life the fountain art. Freely take Freely let me take of thee, then spring thou up within my heart, rise to all eternity. That's Charles Wesley, his words, Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus loves you. He will not forsake you. Though earth may cave in around you, God is going to protect his people. But you must be born again. I beg you, be born again. Pay heed to the word of God. Be born again. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you, and you'll be born again. And then nothing, nothing, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I thank God. I praise God. Thank you for this message. And uh, we'd like to get some feedback from our Facebook audience. We'd like to get some feedback uh, from our Go to Meet Me audience. We'd like to get feedback from our Twitter audience. If we can help you to grow in Christ in any way, if we can pray for you and guide you in any way, share some literature with, contact us, connect us. The most important thing is that you give your life to Jesus. We're living in the last days. Time is winding up. Get saved now. And if you're already saved, stay saved. Stay saved. Don't let anybody or anything steal your crown. Praise God. I look forward to meeting with you next week. Same time, same station, same hookup. And we invite you on Wednesday nights to join us. 7 o'clock p.m. Same station, same hookup for Through the Bible in one year. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to stop our recording, but we are give you an opportunity to unmute your phones and connect with us. We praise God. Praise God. Bless you, Lord. Give me a call, somebody.